Hey, what's up? I'm back again with another tutorial today for you guys. Uh, today, uh, we're going to be talking about um, kind of like a plugin for Cinema 4D called Creative Abstract. And uh, not too long ago, I made an animation using this plugin. I actually did not make this. Uh, there's a guy on YouTube. His name is Mud HD. He's the one that actually made this plugin. But uh, there's some cool stuff you can do with this. And I had a couple people re uh, request a tutorial. Uh, so I figured I'd go ahead and do one because this is a uh, pretty quick, simple, and straightforward, and you can uh, really do some cool stuff and get a neat effect. And really, all you're going to need is Cinema 4D, of course, and uh, this one file here, which I will provide down in the description below, so you guys can download it. Uh, but anyways, uh, once you have that, we'll just go ahead and open up uh, uh, the file that I gave to you guys, and immediately you're going to be presented with this. It'll say Creative Abstract. Oh, and on a side note, I am working with Cinema 4D R13, so I don't know if this works with other versions. I would assume it would, but I don't know for a fact. So, uh, yeah, don't hold me against that. Uh, don't hold my word on that. But anyways, um, basically, um, yeah, you can jump right in. Um, here's your uh, little time frame down here. You can go ahead and change this to whatever. I typically always do about 400. So let's go ahead and start with that. We'll do 400, and basically the craziness here is your uh, simulation. And what's neat about this is you really don't have to mess a whole lot with, um, you know, uh, render settings. It's pretty much all done for you, and it renders pretty quickly, at least on my computer it does. As you can see there, that was pretty fast. Um, but if you don't want text, uh, all you have to do is go down here and uh, get rid of this. Just delete that and get rid of it, and you're changed your base shape here. Uh, you've got a choice of sphere, platonic, a cube, and text. So I've actually done both of these, so I'm going to try a cube uh, since I haven't done this before. And you can uh, just reposition this if you want to. So I'm going to kind of make this uh, more in the center of the screen. I guess that's close enough. And basically, uh, to animate this, uh, it's really simple. Um, uh, you can just literally change the craziness to say something like that. You know, 18%, you don't have to do a whole lot. And uh, if you go ahead and play this, it automatically, uh, you know, simulates it for you. And like I said, the nice thing about this is it renders pretty quick and looks pretty cool. Um, but if you want to, you can keyframe, keyframe the craziness. So, like, say it started at, like, 18%. Control, left click. And uh, we'll go ahead a few frames, say about frame 60 or so. We'll bring the craziness up to, like like 50% will keyframe that so it'll slowly build up as you can see there but now if you notice if we go to render this it will take a little bit slightly longer time so the bigger you make this uh, the more it has to calculate so the longer it's going to take to render so you can see if we turn it up to 99% it's significantly slower um, and you may notice you're getting uh, kind of these black shadows and stuff especially on the back side uh, to fix that you should just be able to drop in the light and that should pretty much take care of uh, some of the the blackness that you're seeing. So we'll drop in the light down there and see what we get. All right, so it kind of clears it up a little bit. Uh, you know, it's up to you guys. Quite honestly, this is my first time I've experimented with a cube, and I don't really like the way it looks. So I really like the sphere. I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, the spheres look pretty awesome, in my opinion. So, um, you know, but it's up to you guys, whatever you want to do. Uh, you can see that looks pretty cool. So if we play this, you'll see what we have. It gets slightly bigger. Um, you also have the option to change the scale. So if you want this to be much larger, but like I said, keep in mind, uh, it will will take a longer time to render. And basically your resolution here is just uh, how smooth this is. So if you turn this up to 100%, the edges are going to be a lot smoother. But side effect to that is you're going to notice uh, it's going to take a significantly longer amount of time to render but you do get some pretty neat looking renders off of that. I'd say 50% is fine. Uh, basically all this is doing in is increasing the geometry to this uh, abstract object to make, you know, like I said, the edges smoother and whatnot, and the reflections a little bit better. Um, that's not really a big deal. Uh, so yeah, those are basically your um, your options here. If I wanted to get let this get bigger over time, say I, want, I started it, here we'll start it at zero, I control left click and we'll go to frame like 120 and uh, we'll bring that scale up to about right there 119% keyframe that see what we got 
So you can see there you get a whole new effect where it grows and whatnot. We'll go ahead and do a quick render and see what we got. All right, so you can see that look that looks pretty sweet. I mean, it's pretty awesome. Um, now I will notice uh, whenever we do render this, you'll notice the background. Um, it's kind of uh, lighter towards the middle and you've got kind of this blue shading around the edges. If you want that a different color, all you have to do is go into the stage tab, uh, press the plus button, open that up, uh, click on this material, the background material, and uh, you're going to click on this little box here, the gradient, and then you can go in here and change this to whatever you'd like. So if you wanted it green, and then we could also add another one in here by double clicking, we can make it more than one gradient. So we'll do something like that. And I'm just kind of experimenting, guys. So um, we'll do kind of an orange color. There we go. Try to evenly space these apart. All right, we'll leave it at that. We'll go ahead and do a quick render real quick and see what this looks like. All right, so there you go. That's pretty vibrant, pretty crazy. I don't know if I really liked it or not. Uh, basically just doing this to show you guys how it works, how this is done. So um, quite honestly, I really would just prefer it to be all white, in my opinion. But it's up to you guys. So if we give this a quick render, see what we got. So there you go, guys. That's uh, that's basically it. Um, I mean, there's not you really don't have to do a whole lot more than that. It's that simple. Uh, like I said, all your uh, all your tools and stuff that you have available to you and options are going to be under here. Um, you know, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Just play with these controls and and see what you get. So it's up to you guys. Um, also, I almost forgot to mention if you change the um, the seed, you're basically going to get a different look. So if you just type in a random number. It'll just it'll give you kind of a, a different animation. So like if I'll show you for example if we put the seed at one thousand, keyframe that, and then at frame one hundred, we change the seed to like four hundred. Control keyframe that. Let's see what we have. So you can see that's really crazy. So, uh, that's basically it, guys. Um, that's all there really is to it. Um, as usual, I hope you found this helpful. I hope you guys create some neat stuff with this. Um, if you did like this tutorial, please uh, leave a like down below. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, if you have any thoughts, uh, anything I may have missed, once again, uh, leave them down in the comments below. If you guys have any uh, requests for tutorials, uh, put those down in the comments section. Let me know, and I'll, I'll see what I can do. So uh, that'll do it for this tutorial, guys. Uh, I will see you guys later. Peace.